Opinionated and now caffeinated, Wake Up War Chant is fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Come explore our world of coffee. Founded in 2014 by the Lemmix family, Ed, Courtney, and their son, Brett, DeLuna Coffee is Florida State through and through. The pursuit of the perfect blend of coffee beans is a 365-day effort for the family, but they'll always find time to tailgate for their knolls in the autumn. Stand at attention for their red, white, and brew in honor of armed forces. The Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard, DeLuna has created this fair trade organic blend. Enjoy this premium French roast coffee and salute to the good old USA. Use the promo code WARCHANT15 for a 15% discount. Visit DeLunaCoffee.com and check out their Facebook and Instagram. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Coffee's for closers only. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunchavandi. And Corey Clark. Wake up! What is up? It is Wake Up Warchant. It is fueled by DeLuna Coffee. DeLunaCoffee.com. That's D-E-L-U-N-A. Coffee. C-O-2-F-2-E's.com. Coffee. 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 Use the promo code WARCHANT15, W-A-R-C-H-A-N-T-1-5 to get your 15% discount at DeLunaCoffee.com. WARCHANT.com, our employer, the ultimate semi sports source, our show, Wake Up WARCHANT is myself, underlined, bold 72-point font, Corey S. Clark. What up, Corey? What's up, buddy? How you doing? You have a good weekend, I hope? Yeah, yeah, man. Knowles winning on the hardwood. We back. Um, lots of football on. Finally caught up. Binge through season four of Yellowstone. Not sure okay. why, but you know, kind of made it this far. So just finish the drill, I guess, at this juncture. So, right. Um, a lot of people like it. It's not my. Uh, it's, it's not my sort of vintage, but uh, I'm here for it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to watch the prequel because what else is there to watch right now? I heard about some good show on Apple TV about. Like some Afghani seal, no American U.S. Marine seals that were in Afghanistan. Um, but I don't have Apple TV, so I can't watch that. Is is Ozark back? Yeah, what's going on with that show? You got me into that. wasn't a big fan of that either. But you know, it's all right. Yeah, Ozark, Ozark, and Yellowstone to me are about the same. Uh, they're not great, but they're good enough to watch. Yeah. Um, that's how I. That's how I'd frame both of them. No, Ozark hasn't come back yet. I know they filmed over the summer because. Um, well, they were out filming on Lake Lanier over the summer, so it's got to be close to coming back. Maybe in a couple months, maybe a month, month and a half. Yellow Jackets. You might want to give Yellow Jackets a try. I've heard, I thought people were being sarcastic about Yellowstone, like making fun of it and calling it because, you know, Cart Hart Jackets and Kevin Co- I thought like people were calling oh, right. Yellowstone yeah. Yellow Jackets, but it's apparently, it's, yeah, it's another show entirely. Yes, Go it's figure. about a team of uh, high school girls soccer players, but it's set, half of it's set in 1996. So it's like our, well, at least my like college age, high school age years. So it's got a cool soundtrack. And then half of it is set present day. And there's some weird shenanigans that go on in the wilderness when they get in a plane crash. Okay. So no spoilers alert there. That, the, no spoilers there. That all happens very early on in the series, but that's what it's about. But anyway, enough about that. It's time to talk about, uh, um, what should we talk about? The well, goals. let's not do the basketball first. Let's do the transfer. Point. Yeah, let's do that. I was in a good mood, but I'm not in a good mood anymore. I don't like this guy. He's a subscriber. Just deal with it. You don't like me, apparently. I don't like you either. It's fine. Um, 52682 is in his user handle. I'm thinking that's got to be some zip code, probably in a miserable part of this country for him to constantly come at me. But, hey, man, whatever. You pay my salary. <laughs> Thank you. A thought rather than an argument with Aslan. Verse is a big pickup. That would be Jared Verse from Albany, defensive end. Mm-hmm. Uh, Florida State got him over the weekend. Uh, Verse is a big pickup, and while he might not be Jermaine Johnson, he may not have to be if the offense is better. I agree with your harping on the third down percentage. The offense could help the defense a ton without scoring 10 more points a game if they could simply sustain drives yeah. that yeah. flip the field position and give the defense a chance to rest and not always be playing behind the eight ball. Corey, keep up the good work. Okay, now what I take umbrage with here is that I'm not harping on the third down percentage. Um, I didn't bring up scoring 10 points more per game. That was one of the fellow subscribers. I was our guy, Island Chief. I don't know what animus you harbor towards me. Work through it. I don't understand. What am I missing? Because I didn't seem... uh... Well, he's coming at me. And they said, Corey, keep up the good work. Like, what? I'm not doing anything here. I'm not doing anything here. 
I think he was talking about because I'm the one that brought up the third down percentages. I think but he was he says saying a that's a thought good point. rather than an argument with Aslan. What? Oh, you okay. Know, well, come look, on, man. It's it's the fine. words are in front I, of I me. Okay, do do the pandering thing. They're subscribers. We gotta be nice to subscribers. Go ahead. I, no, I, I didn't. I I feel like both of us, but especially you, have gotten a lot worse messages than that. That seemed pretty benign. Is all I'm saying. Uh, I don't know if you have a history with him. Yes, and that's this. Is oh, okay. Times. All right. Well, there you go. I got gotcha. you. Well, that makes that makes sense. I got gotcha. you. Um, have thick skin, Aslan. I very, do. I'm very, good, man. I'm good. Good. So uh, get off but show. it is true about the uh, about the third down percentage. It's not just. I mean, it would obviously you'd score more points the longer you hold on to the ball, but also, yeah, your defense doesn't have to stop them from going 60 yards. They can stop them from 85 yards, or they can. You know, be on the be on the sideline for an extra three or four minutes because you keep picking up first downs. Whatever, um, it's a big deal, but not as I mean, it is a big deal. It's a bigger deal than uh, than verse. But for those that don't know, um, you you might hear, and I don't know how much all of our listeners are well versed, pun intended, Hey-o. in the transfer portal, um, because you're going to hear a guy from Albany, the you know the the University like, of Albany, the University of Albany, and be like, oh, all right, whatever, man, okay, that's I, you you went to Albany. Apparently, and again, we're not we're not experts. We don't watch everybody's film, but apparently, this was the defensive end in the portal. Like everybody wanted him. Uh, he had over thirty offers. Um, Texas, he was, LSU, Florida. Yeah, yeah, but like big, sport. big offers. Like yeah. the the he whatever he put on film last year um, was impressive enough that almost every Division One school wanted him um, immediately. So when he put his name in the portal, he was a big get. For comparison, I know they're not, uh, you know, it's hard to rank the, the portal players, but I can promise you Verse is more well thought of right now than Jermaine Johnson was at this time last year. Oh. I don't I don't necessarily know why, but it's the truth. Um, just he's put more on film. I don't know. He's shown more. Who knows? But this was a huge position of need. He will still just be, I guess, a sophomore. So uh, yes, if he's as good as you think he is, you get him for two more years. Mm-hmm. You you probably you you definitely get him for two more years. You might get him for three more years. But man, you're talking about the number one in my opinion now, especially after you've you've hit the receiver portal. It's the number one position of need on the team, and it was going into the end of the year. It was going into the off season. You had to go get defensive ends. Well, buddy, Florida State just got the best defensive end on the market. And what's funny when you think about the the new age of college football is I know everybody was really disappointed with Marvin Jones. By the way, congratulations to Marvin Jones, College Football Hall of Fame. That's right. Marvin Jones Sr. No. Marvin Jones Jr., eh. just whatever, man. Good luck. But what's funny about that is that, you know, people were clearly upset and not happy that they lost that Marvin Jones Jr. chose Georgia, didn't come to Florida State. Well, who do you think is going to have a bigger impact on the 2022 football season? Hmm. You know what I mean? Even if Marvin Jones Jr. had come to Florida State, who is going to make a bigger impact on next year? Not, not saying who's going to be the overall better player, but at next year in 2022, do you think Jared Verse or Marvin Jones Jr. would make a bigger impact? Right, right. Yeah. That's where we are now, right? Like, Absolutely. yes, it was, yeah. it was a bummer that you lost Marvin Jones Jr. That's a big-time get. But this matters. This matters as much, if not more. You get two years of this guy who, if he had been like a – Maybe. Rank- he enrolled in 2019. So, Oh, okay. All right. So um, if he has a big year, maybe you're just doing this all over again? Yeah, but, you know, we'll, we'll say that most likely two years, you know. Sure. It's not, it's not as sort of urgent. You know, we knew it, with Jermaine, it was like, all right, we got you for a year, but this one potentially – carry on so but don't you i mean so it's just like that's how we have to adjust our our the way we look at recruiting classes now Mm -hmm. yes big loss for marvin jones jr this is a bigger gain than marvin jones jr was a loss um that's just the reality of it and like how about kevin coleman going to jackson state Uh, it's incredible too like florida state what was that a suck miami Welcome yeah. to the sun. Well, yeah, you li- you lived that life, didn't you? Live the life. At least Dion did it to somebody else. I know Florida State was after him too, but all- for everybody that doesn't know, most experts thought for sure Kevin Coleman, the wide receiver, five star, was going to go to Miami. Yeah. And on Saturday, he chose Jackson State. Mm-hmm. So, oh, but a month ago, everybody thought he was going to go to Florida State, and there was a chance that Florida State was going to have Travis Hunter and uh, Kevin Coleman as part of their recruiting class. Now, look, I'm not I'm not poo pooing this. Obviously, Travis Hunter, you desperately wanted. He is an immediate impact, and maybe Kevin Coleman is too. I don't know. But I'm not so sure. Throw Travis Hunter out of the equation. Is it better to get Micah Pittman and Johnny Wilson than it was to get Kevin Coleman? 
Like, who has a bigger impact on the 2022 Florida State football team? Probably those two guys, right? Just because you can't Probably. expect true freshmen, you can't expect true freshmen to come in out of the gate and be huge difference makers. Travis Hunter, sure. Yeah. But other than that, Kevin Coleman, I don't know. So, again, it, you, when you miss in the recruiting cycles, it's th- th- this buoys everything. You, you feel good about I mean, what an offseason other than Travis Hunter saying no, which we'll never forget. We'll always remember where we were. Other than that happening, this has been a uh, an exceptional offseason so far for Florida State. I'm not against it at all. Like I, I'm, I'm warming up to the portal, I guess. I guess I was anti-portal at one point, according to our guy in Daytona, Jay. Holler, what's up? But I know last year Norvell was saying that, you know, they're eventually they're going to want to do this more grassroots. They're going to depend on high school and just is kind of, but this is where they're at in the cycle. I don't know, man. And it's not a knock on Norvell or Florida state. It just, I don't think if, unless other than Alabama and Georgia, like SC is offering guys, Oklahoma is offering guys, Texas is offering guys, LSU is offering guys, you know, they're, they're going in the portal after not just one yeah. guy, they're going after two, three, multiple quote unquote, big time transfer. So, I just think this is kind of part and parcel of how it's always going to be Uh, for most teams, man. Like even, I mean, Alabama got Jameson Williams from the portal. They got Landon Dickerson from the portal. Uh, Like every program is going to depend on this to varying degrees, but this is, I think the degree that Florida State's going to be depending on it the way they did last year. I I mean, I I imagine this is going to be like at least two, three more cycles are going to be kind of relying heavily on the portal. I'm not against it, but just uh, it goes to maybe again to the point of, we can't get too upset with the way the recruiting services rank teams or, or they have their rankings because they're not factoring in transfers. And when you do trans, when you do tr- factor in the transfer, sorry, if I could speak like Florida state's going to end up being really uh, highly positioned, but I don't care about those rankings, man. I care about the ones that matter, you know? So yeah. I'm cool. And one, one of the websites, uh, 247 actually does rank the portal classes. Um, take it for what it's worth though, because you don't know so many of these guys haven't really proven a ton. Um, but yeah, I mean, Florida state, according to them has the number one portal class in the country ahead of Alabama, ahead of Georgia, you know, Alabama got a uh, commitment from the Georgia tech running back who was really good this year. Yeah. Um, Jamar Gibbs. Yeah. They've gotten a couple really big time players, but when you look at what Florida state's done, I, I, I genuinely think they've gotten at least five starters, um, like ready made, ready to go starters, um, th- in the portal already. And they're not done. So we just again, and I said this at the time. I, 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 it's just being reinforced that when you look at what Florida State has done since that loss at Florida, almost all of it has been good news, other than one guy that was with you for a long time that decided to go somewhere else. And there's no guarantee he doesn't end up with you eventually at some point anyway. But other than that, it's almost all been good news. Um, Jamie Robinson announced he's coming back. That's a big deal. Um, still no word on Fabian Lovett, who I think would be the only one left that you'd have to worry about. Mm. And you've, you've gotten at least three wide receivers in the portal. That's an immediate upgrade. You've gotten an offensive lineman. That's an immediate upgrade, maybe two. And then you got the best defensive end in the, in the country, perhaps one of the best defensive linemen that was available in the country. And they're like Jared versus he, if he's as good as people say he is, if he's as special and freakish as they say he is, he'll have more of an impact than any high school kid that signed this year except for maybe a, a, a great wide receiver somewhere i'm talking about like a defensive lineman he will have more of an impact than anybody else that signed that's what florida state just did after a five and seven season but you're right what eventually has to happen is you you become like alabama where you're sprinkling them in and i've said this before i know but you're sprinkling them in right mm. you're sprinkling them in like three or four here or there for depth purposes or you need you want to you know you're losing some great wide receivers let me go get one of those guys. But you you don't depend on them to replenish your starting lineup like half of it. There is a chance that Florida State's entire, out of their starting 22, half of them will be transfers. Just like last year. I think there were more than that last year. Um, or close to it. That I think that's the immediate future for Florida State. And then hopefully you start doing well enough that, like the guys from this class that you're really high on, that you signed, like the Sam McCalls of the world. We're not going to be having to go get starting safeties next year or two years from now because you got Sam McCall and you got Knowles in there and you got Cooper in there. You're building from within. But think of it like, um, I don't know, man, like the Braves. I'll, I'll equate it to a championship team. 
I'll, I'll go ahead and equate it to a championship team. You, you, you build from the farm system with Acuna and Albies and Dansby and Freddie. Those are your core guys. But then you sprinkle in a closer like Will Smith and a, and a starter like Charlie Morton. You go and get needs. You, you build up. You have your core. And then you go sprinkle in, you know, okay, we, need a, we definitely need a couple defensive linemen. We need an offensive lineman. We need a receiver. You start, you start addressing needs. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's just crazy, man. It's just crazy what this sport is now. Um, and I know I lament it a lot, what it was yesteryear and what it used to be like. Um, but for a team like Florida State, man, the transfer portal is a godsend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you're literally like, now that you have that kid, if he's as good as he is, if we think he is and he stays healthy, and, you, and there's other ones on the, on the hook too. You might get a couple other big-time transfers. Your, your roster has already gone up another notch to where you could be legitimately eight or nine win team. You might have, you might have brought in two or three guys that play in the league, um, just like you did last year. Maybe five guys. We don't know. Uh, and but all yeah. that, and you went to eight to nine. Wow. Look at you. Well, I know. But, I mean, nine wins is a big deal, man. Now, if this team could get to nine wins, that would be awesome. But they let, you know, again, two years ago, that roster was a joke. The 2020 roster was an abomination. Um, you know, it just was. That, that was not. That was not a winning football roster. It was not good at anything. Well, now all of a sudden you're starting to build. You got some pieces in place, and we'll, the next step is for the offense to take a big step. But uh, and maybe you know maybe you get a quarterback that tr challenges Jordan Travis. Uh, maybe you get to go get another running back. Um, maybe a couple more tight ends, just to see what's out there, Aslan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just yeah. just see what's out there. But man, I I thought that was they've had some good moments in the portal already. Uh, this year, that was an enormous one. That was that was the biggest one they could have gotten, in my opinion. Except for Caleb Williams, I guess. Yeah, he graded out 83 defensively, uh, 83.9 pass rush. Did play the reigning, uh, recently crowned. Well, yeah, they're the reigning now. They weren't this season. But North Dakota State, he had eight total tackles. So, again, I've asked you this before. If If I've got two sacks and four TFLs, does that mean I have – like four, I have six total negative tackles, or like no, sacks the sacks included? count. The sacks are included. Right. So I had a sack for a ten yard loss and a forced fumble against North Dakota State. Uh, they played against Syracuse. He graded out at seventy nine point nine against Cuse. Um, so he was a you know like newcomer of the year in the CAA. Uh, so yeah, quite uh, quite decorated here. So um, definitely a, a great addition for Florida State and at a position of need. So. A double win-win. Before we get to hoops, let's get back to the mailbag here, Corey. I guess we'll keep this on a little bit of a recruiting uh, sort of slant. This comes from Seminole Mike One. Happy New Year, men. Hoping we can continue the climb in 2022. Maybe by the time this airs, we'll have defensive end Jared Verse in the fold. Hey, yo. Hey, look at that. Look at that. By the way, everybody, let me know what we should, we should do. Um... Because we're just, all of our shows are going to end up being Renegade Express. If we can't get through all, then like, should I should I start picking out the best ones? Does everybody get it? Do I put Corey on some sort of buzz shot collar and a clock? Um, because we're going to do Renegade Express today. I'll post a thread later on this week, and we'll get more questions. So it's like, I don't want them to have to constantly produce content for us. But let me know what you guys think about how we're managing Renegade Express. And if you have any cool nickname ideas for Verse. I'm yeah. thinking like if he gets a second sack, it's something like second verse, same as the first, mm. something like that. That's a little corny, but I'm all about corny. I love corny, but there's got to be something we can do with the name verse. All I'm saying. So mm. be spitballing that, guys. We're going to workshop it. We got, what do we have, eight months, seven, seven and a half months until uh, Duquesne. So just let us know before then. Maybe you guys could, maybe the NIL thing will be you and him. Instead of myself and uh, Devontae Lotero last year, instead of like trench talk, and it'd be, it'd be like chorus and verse, but the chorus is spelled like C O R E, like chorus. Okay. Again, we're, we're, we're workshopping things, guys. We're going to workshop some things, come up with some ideas. I don't mind. I, Aslan, I like that you're, I like, the, I like the effort for sure. I like the effort. I really do appreciate it. Question number one. Um, I should have read this beforehand. Seminole, uh, Seminole Dynasty Mike. I think it's Seminole Dynasty Mike. Hold on, let me get back there. You're just Seminole Mike. I apologize. You think he's talking about Hunter Washington? I don't know. Last year? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I. I um, this is a subscriber inside joke. Go ahead and look at the thread. It's probably on page three or four right now. I don't. I just the first question just doesn't ring a bell in my head. So I'm gonna I'm gonna punt on that one. 
We'll go to the second question. Nobody has really talked much about the slow commitment of Julian Armella. He was supposed to decide at 9 a.m., but he suddenly prolonged that until the end of early signing day. I think Norvell was behind that all the way. Once he knew Travis Hunter was not likely coming, he asked Armella to delay until the end of the day so FSU could get a big five-star boost at the end of a five-star bust day. Maybe this is a good question for Michael Langston to investigate. Stay safe, fellas. <laughs> I mean, it is a... Uh... I I mean I guess it's plausible. I just I'm just so I'm just so happy that you guys are just so um see the the bright side in so many things. So much so much Mike Norvell support. I hope I hope he I don't know if you probably shouldn't listen to the show cuz I'm critical sometimes. But I hope he does know that man he has got so much unwavering support of a fan base and it's it's wild. You know, like uh eight wins in in 2 years, but man like that he's the, the the puppet master. He could pull that off. I I I never thought about it that way. Seminole Mike one. It's it's plausible. I uh, my theory is that when Travis Hunter wasn't going to come, uh, the salary cap was affected right. by that, and yeah. uh, things were able to get moved. But I don't know. Maybe it was like, all right, let's let's win the 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 new cycle. We lost the afternoon. Let's win the night. Possibly, I guess. Well, yeah, but I think that you both could be right there, right? Like, you know, maybe maybe money's moved around, finances moved around because of what happened. Like, we have to have some good news. We have to have a bang here on signing day. Um, and that was the one that they're like, no, you're not waiting. Here's what we're doing for you. Let's quit screwing around. Let's go ahead and uh, announce and get this done. Um but yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of it really is, man. Like you, you look at, at how much better they were this year than they were in, in 2020. Um, not a huge bar to clear by any means, but they were in every game uh, but one. Uh, could have won seven or eight games. Could have lost ten. I got it. But uh, but they, they were in every game. They were so much better coached. They seemed so much more competently coached. Um, and then what he's done here. I mean, you know, you had a number 12 class in the country coming off a five and seven season. That's just high school. And literally, I mean, I do think if you added these guys up when all the dust is settled and all the transfers and all the schools are done with Florida state's got a top 10 class. I don't know that you could argue that at this point. You, they did. They just do. Yeah. They got three, four star wide or two, four star wide receivers. Um, maybe even call them three stars if they haven't proven it yet, but whatever a four or five star defensive end, a four star offensive line. Like they've done enough with that, that you're like, okay, well, they've got a top 10 class. And it's like he addressed it, – it, there's no head in the sand like, oh, no, we, we believe – and look, he's going to say, yeah, we believe in our wide receivers. We like what we got. Well, yeah, but the proof is in the actions. And they clearly understood like what that. we all understood is they weren't even close to good enough out there. And that was, in a, that was addressed immediately. And it just bodes well, right? Like, and it's also not like – there, all these guys were guys that they had recruited. I don't think, like I don't, they, I, they certainly didn't recruit the kid from Albany, but they didn't recruit the kid. I, I doubt they recruited um, uh, the kid from Arizona State, right? They might have had a history with him because they're from Arizona, but they didn't. They didn't recruit that guy, did they? And they didn't recruit the guy from Wisconsin. They didn't. My point is, they didn't have any past relationships with those guys. They saw guys in the portal, went out and attacked the portal because that's the new age. They understand how important that is. They saw firsthand how much better a defense got with just one portal season um and they know how important it is and they attack it like they're they're using what's available to them and using it well mm -hmm. now again resultant wins you know everybody's on mike norvell's side right now including me i think it even, even including you but you go six and six again next year with some ugly losses and your offense is still piddling around converting 31 percent of the time on third down and hey, stop averaging, harping stop harping on it averaging 27 a game or 25 a game or whatever, you're going to lose a lot of fans. But for right now, you couldn't have asked for a better offseason other than you-know-who being in the fold. Hmm. But he's not. He wanted to go somewhere else. Yeah. Real quick, you're right. You are right about the them having a top-10 recruiting class. And I know we care about these things, but we got we to gotta stop caring about I mean, not – care about recruiting, keep up with it, realize that it is the lifeblood of your program. It, it is very important. But, man, like I, I don't care where Florida State falls in, in the rankings, man. I really don't. I care about the oh, class. Sure. I care about you, like the you, needs, who they've hit. And yeah. I, I'm not, you know, so I, that's my whole thing. I mean, I, I wasn't 
panicked. I wasn't saying what a bust of a class this was. I mean, but Travis losing Travis Hunter, there is no two ways about it. Absolutely sucks. Like watching, you know, gosh, and Jigba Smith, like the way he played against, you know, who did, who did they tear up? Utah? Like the way he was playing for Ohio State, that receiver, like I was looking at that guy, I'm like, man, like that's, like I could see Travis Hunter doing that for Florida State. Like I could see him going nuts in a game like that. Like catch, maybe not 300 yards nuts, but close to that. I'm like, man, that would be really nice to have. You don't have that. I get yeah. it. You move on. Yeah. Everything else that you needed to get done, um, I mean, you've you've gotten done. So that's again, this all sets the stage for 2020. I think I know we're all a little bit, you know, we're heart. We don't want to put our hearts out there and get hurt again. I understand that. But um, by July, you'll you'll be with uh, you'll be on the bus with me. I'll be on the bus. You'll be on the ten win bus. You'll be on the big bus. You all will trust me. You will. Yeah, and I think you know whether there's a eleven by your team name or a four or a twelve or a twenty, it's it's about the, the it's about bringing in talent, right? It's yes. acquiring it's acquiring talent, and we'll see. I mean, but you know some of these guys are proven. Um, not all of them are proven superstar. None of them are, or they wouldn't be transferring. Um, but what he's done at least gives you hope that this roster is being replenished in a way that looks is more um, more like a typical Florida State roster, or it's just like a, 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 a an ab- above average ACC roster, which it was not two years ago. Hmm. It is now. Um, now you got to go again, go on the field and win games. But the number one job of any coach, and I've I'll say this till I die, and I who knows when that will be. But I, I, um, I don't know why I said that. It's going to be in 50 years. <laughs> long time. Oh, what's, what's the matter with you? I don't you? even know the number. I can't even say the number. So yeah, good. I don't even know. Um, but acquired talent. Acqu- player acquisition. Talent acquisition. That's what yeah, says. Yeah, that's what you've got to do. And he's, he's doing it almost as well as you could possibly hope yes. yeah. for a team that's had four straight losing seasons. Yes. And it was yeah. just an absolute train wreck of a bummer that a kid that was the – you were lucky enough to have the number one player in the country tied to you for years, and then he pulls what he pulled on signing day. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that's just – it was awful luck, but you throw that away. Well, don't throw it away. Well, again, but it's part of what happened. But on to- other than that, I mean, I just – I can't imagine Florida State fans or anything but really impressed with what he's done – Um so far in that on that front yeah we'll all laugh about it we'll we'll cheers to travis hunter when we're sitting at newport beach everybody at some yacht club getting ready for the rose bowl for that well and he and look so so next year we'll be where will we be i I think they're gonna go if they go 10 and 2 let's just say 10 and 2 there we go we'll be in atlanta probably for the for the peach no we'll be in the orange bowl Unless the Orange okay, Bowl is sure. a playoff, I don't know if the, yeah, it's a playoff. No, I don't think it'd be a playoff because it was it was this year for Georgia. So we'll be in the Orange Bowl. Um, Ooh, I can't wait we'll for the Orange Bowl brunch, the Orange Bowl media yeah. brunch, man! I can't wait. We'll get there. I don't know the twenty eighth, twenty eighth or 29th. and on December thirtieth is when we'll see the Instagram post from Travis Hunter saying, "Enough with that foolishness. I'm back home where I belong." After you know, yeah. His 1,800-yard, 21-touchdown, six-interception season at Jackson State. Yeah. All right. I'll so like it's all it's all going to work out, Aslan. It is. I'm not, never in doubt. Never in doubt. All right, we got two more, and then we'll talk some hoops, and we also got Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. Quinn 67 wake up! By the way, somebody commented on YouTube and said that my wake up at, like, the nine-minute mark of one of our latest episodes was – was a good one. It was on brand, but it wasn't grading. Oh, there which, you go. Come on, man. All right. That's it's part of the show, man. So um, if you can do it well and not be grading, yeah, that's well, actually, a he didn't say grading. That was he didn't use the the uh, adjective grading. That was somebody else. Remember a few weeks ago. Uh, As on the way, you said wake up at the nine twenty mark was your best one. It wasn't jarring or ear piercing. You still kept true to your brand. Oh, okay. There you go. So I don't know. Maybe I'll just put that on a soundboard instead of me saying I'll just have it recorded. Like, boom. Yeah, go find that one. Yeah. All right. Um, wake up. S. Quinn 67 says, Happy New Year, War Chant Crew. Aslan, I hope you're doing well. And I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you, S. Quinn 67. I am. I was I was doing good today. And I saw N. Parker. Oh, says his name. I saw, you know, I saw the shot at me. Yeah. It's fine. I'm sure I'll have to apologize to him on air because Gene and I don't like it when I'm mean to our mm. loyal subscribers. I don't think you were mean. I'm sure Corey is getting past the plague. Are you? Mm. You good? I am. I still can't taste anything. Uh, um, 
which is awesome because I just went by uh, Tom Lang's house before we recorded this show. Oh, you're in Tallahassee. His, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. I came down. His wife was nice enough to give me the hottest hot sauce they have, something called Viper. Okay. Because I was like, I want to taste like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to taste something crazy to see what it does to me. Like, because I'm not a hot sauce guy. I don't like hot sauce. Um, I do mild on my wings because I'm a big baby. I drink Mick Ultra. It's not great for my stomach. But anyway, I'm like, you know, I want to do the hot ones challenge and just see if I can even taste it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I did taste it. Oh, oh. Okay. Initially, though, I did like, she just brought it out on a plate. I dipped my finger in it, a big slob of it. Mm. It just downed it. And, um, it, it burned my mouth for a second. Right. I immediately started sweating, and then I started hiccuping, Ooh. which is weird, right? That, yeah, it's absolutely. just the body's. What a magical thing the body is. <laughs> like, I don't even taste what's going on in my mouth, but my body's like, well, this isn't good. What just happened? Red alert, red alert. Sweat starts pouring out of me. I start hiccuping. Um, you know, it was nuts. I've never hiccuped from anything, like, hot before, but I did there, um, so it was serious. But uh, yeah, it, no, no lasting effect at all. I was fine in two minutes. Maybe not even that. Maybe 45 seconds, I was fine. I was going to say, I own one of those Carolina Reaper Yeah, that's what chips. this was, I think. The, uh, the one-chip oh, one challenge. The chips. I have that, oh. so maybe we should record you doing that, and you can like flex on everybody. It'll be you know, a couple people will understand and know, but you know, the world by large won't know. And like, what wow, worries me, guy. though, man, is that it's so odd. It's a little off-putting, actually, and a little concerning that I just started... Um, I know Sweating. always hiccups are involuntary, yeah. but it was so immediate. Like I you just, to, just start, they were violent hiccups. And I'm like, I, it, it's like my body just wanted to just reject it completely. And I'm like, if I eat one of those chips, you know, Stephanie was like, you're lucky you didn't just release everything, like release your bowels. Like <laughs> your body is just going to sh just shed everything. So I don't know if I want to film something like that. Cause I have no idea. Like I'm, I might be like I don't taste anything at all, and then my I'm just I've melted it in front on the camera. So it's like taking uh, a painkiller. Like you can be on a painkiller, you can't feel anything, but if you have like a damaged tendon, like you're gonna still hurt it. You know, you're just not gonna feel it until it all wears off. So like maybe your body's like, all right, we know we can't taste it, taste it, but we know what you just did to us. Yeah, and yeah, we're not gonna let you get away out. with this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's blow past all of the mess and get onto a great 2022. Amen, as Quinn 67. Baseball is right around the corner, and this could be our year. Corey, we need you to not watch any of the games. Work for the mm. Braves. There you go. There's your excuse. Tell, tell right. Ira. <laughs> right. uh, I hope so, man. I just I will always – I don't know what point we'll have to hit as a baseball program for me to not feel optimistic because I, I know and I don't know a lot about it, which is a good thing. I, I, I try to make – too much out of football like i know so much i probably really don't know that either but i just invest so much time into trying to figure out as much as i can about the sport of college football uh that I always you know i'm just so jaded uh, but baseball just like all right, like all right whatever we got a couple good stuff all right yeah parker messick is a preseason player of the year okay cool we got some other fancy guy from a private school in jacksonville all right great awesome we got a guy from miami florida the batting order good 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 um, I wonder what would have to happen for me to be like, whatever, like we suck. I don't care about baseball. Cause I, for whatever reason, I I am always rejuvenated uh, by the uh, the hope springing eternal uh, in February. Just am, just am. All right, well that's good. That's good. Serious? I did. Uh, yeah. I talked to Meet uh, last week uh, because they started like their New Year practice. They don't start like their official like team team practices for a couple more weeks, but they're doing. Uh, they can still get together as a team. It's just it's much more limited. Uh, but half his team is out, or more than half of his team is out with COVID, or COVID contacts. He said the first day, they have 39 kids on their roster, um, and I think he said they had 16 that, that were able to be out there. Um, but, you know, he said they're all asymptomatic. Um, so some of them are going to work out at Messer Park. Uh, I shouldn't say, man, don't, don't go bother them. Don't go bother them if they're out there throwing everyone. Uh, but, yeah, I think they're, they're, they're getting their work in anyway. But then I did ask him, he's like, yeah, he goes, I think we have a chance to be considerably better. The pitching will be just as good or better because their pitching staff, you, you forget about it because their offense was so hard to watch, but their pitching staff was electric. Mm. Um, I mean, it wasn't just Messick. I mean, they, I think they were fourth or fifth in the country in strikeouts um, both ways, <laughs> offensively and on the mound. Um, but he does seem to think that they're going to be better defensively and they're going to have a much higher contact rate, which should be music to all of our ears, right? I think like defensively they'll be don't. better up the middle too, man. I think that kid from Tennessee yeah. Tech helps out at shortstop. So, or well, the kid from Florida. Put him 
Well, yeah, too. he'll be yeah. a second baseman. The kid from Florida will be a shortstop. And uh, they got the kid from Miami that was like second or third in the nation in home runs a couple yep. of years ago. So they, yep. they did well in the portal, too. And they also have a bunch of dudes, man. They just have a bunch of guys that can throw, as we saw last year. Um, Scalaro's back, which Meat told me that. He's like, yeah, Jonas Scalaro's. Uh, I'm like, he's still on the team? <laughs> And he laughed. He's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Wow." Um, so yeah, they, I mean, they have they have some they have a bunch of they have experienced guys and they have electric guys and they have major league guys um, that they should. I mean, they should be really good on the mound, and you just hope they hit better. But yeah, I'm excited too, man. I hope they have a uh, they they should be better than they were last year, even though they're losing uh, the ACC Player of the Year. On to my question, do you think the alliance, Big Ten, ACC, and Pac-12 could be the beginning of a governing body for college football? Is the Big Ten part of the alliance? I thought it was just us and the West Coast folk. Um, S. Quinn 67 is smart guy. I'll take him as a word on it. It seems like if that many schools are aligned, it would be able to implement changes best for the sport, which, by the way, I don't know if anybody saw this on Sunday Nick Saban came out and said they need to start regulating this NIL stuff because it's getting right. out of hand. Sure. He didn't say that, but he did say that it's a good thing. Players are getting paid, but it's determining where kids are enrolling at schools, which wasn't supposed to be. I don't know if that's him being coach talk, naive talk. I mean, I get it. Like, all right, we're going to do this NIL thing so the guys that we have can sell jerseys with their name on it. They can do autographs, and they can make money off it, but we're not going to use it as an inducement. I don't think he was that naive. But anyhow, Nick Saban's come out and said it, so – Ball's in your court, Greg Sankey. Uh, it seems like if all these schools are aligned, we'd be able to implement changes best for the sport. The other conferences, SEC, would be posed with going alone or being stuck outside playing with themselves. Have a great week. Go Knowles, Class of 93, S. Quinn 67. No, man, I don't – I mean, I don't know. Whoever's left in the Big 12 can come join us, but it's the SEC, man. I don't, I don't think – we're not going to make them bend to the, our will. I don't know how that would work. I'd love to. I, I, I mean, I get it. Uh, you know, strength in numbers. But, I mean, I don't see Greg Sankey bending the knee to anybody. It's They're going to have much more say-so over the, the trajectory of the sport than anybody else, man. It just sadly, I think I think ESPN's given them that leverage. ESPN values yeah. their product much more than the rest of us. Uh, and for good reason in some regards. Uh, so, no, well, Here's man. what bothers me. Here's what bothers me about it. Well, there's a lot of things, and you guys know I'm on record. Um it's not like they, – and they're right. Like, the SEC gets better ratings. They have, they have more football schools in that conference, people that really genuinely care. They have more loyal, passionate fan bases than most every other conference. And anybody listening to this knows what I'm talking about if you've been to a Florida State game on the road. Those, mo most of those crowds are a joke. They don't really care about football, which is fine. But the problem is, is that I can promise you Florida State fans care about football more than what? 75% of the SEC? So does Notre yeah, Dame fans? Yeah. So do uh so do like Ohio USC State? fans? I saw Texas? the ratings. The ratings from last playoff to this one were just absolute I mean it dropped huge. Yeah. Well, a lot I think some of that was New Year's Eve, but yeah, it's it's you, you get tired of seeing the same teams play. Well, Notre but, Dame was involved, Ohio State was involved. Oh, no, that's true. Yeah, you that's know. what I'm saying. If Florida State was involved, they're yeah. a money make Clemson. Yep. There are a lot of schools that have SEC type passion for their for their football teams and history and tradition, much more than Arkansas and Vanderbilt in the Mississippi schools, in Kentucky, um in Georgia. But the problem is is that all those teams get paid as if they're Alabama, and they get treated by ESPN as if they're Alabama, and they're not Alabama. Um, there, there's only one of those. You know, this isn't it, Florida isn't playing for the national title tonight. Neither is Kentucky, Arkansas, Texas A&M. They aren't. There's two teams, and only one of them is going to win. The conference doesn't win it. But, but the point being is those teams get rewarded for with $20 million extra dollars because it means more in the SEC. Well, it doesn't mean more to Ole Miss fans than it does Florida State fans. But they just got lucky to get into a conference where all of a sudden ESPN decided, yes, these guys care the most. This is the conference we want to put most of our money in. This is our biggest investment. Oh, so Vanderbilt gets, yeah, I don't care. Vanderbilt gets the more money than Clemson and Ohio State, TV-wise. Maybe not Ohio State because they're in the Big Ten. USC, that, that, doesn't, that, that doesn't make sense. I do think eventually, some point in our lifetimes, this will all get this will get figured out, because the SEC can't just go at it alone. They are going to realize at some point that these six schools that that really care about football and have been consistently good, 
And I'm talking about LSU, Florida, Alabama, Auburn. Throw Georgia in there, I guess. And I guess you throw in Texas and Oklahoma now. Um, we they can't they can't be everything. They can't just play each other the whole time. And we're gonna have our own 14 team playoff. Yeah, and this is that this is college football. They can do home and you know homes, I mean? man. They can do home and homes. I mean, imagine but like, I don't they, know they have to me. play other. They have to play other teams, or it has to ma- like you. You it's. It would be like the NFC South and the NFC East just breaking off and just playing each other. I know, but like nobody it, in Rutgers is going to care if that happens. Nobody in Champaign, Illinois is going to care if that happens. Nobody in Pullman, Washington is going to care if that happens. It's sad, but, there, man. but sure, just like nobody in, in Nashville will care. Or nobody in, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, Fayetteville. They've done nothing. They've done nothing in the sport for 50 years. Nothing. What do we? What do they get? Why do they deserve anything? So, but my point being is that there there will come a time where the SEC will realize, for the better of the sport, there has to be some equity. There has to be some equity because otherwise, you are going to be NASCAR. You are going to be regionalized to a point where it's not going. And if you're, I just can't imagine. And I might be naive. I can't imagine that's what they want. That they just want to be. You know, Jeff Gordon versus Dick Trickle. Golly, I could not think of another NASCAR driver other than Dick Trickle and Jeff Gordon. Come on, man. Help Strong. me out. Sorry, man. I don't know. Bill Elliott. Bobby Ray Hall. Or is he but, yeah, I think he was Indy. Uh, Richard Petty. Like, I, it's crazy. I could, who's Jimmy a, Johnson. Who's a, Jimmy Johnson. There you go. Man, Golly, I could not think of any anybody. But it's going to turn. It's going to be NASCAR where it's just completely regionalized. And you don't want that. That's not good for the betterment of the – that's not good for the sport. You want a national sport. Football is popular everywhere. We watch the NFL. You know, it's popular everywhere. You And college football has pockets that are po- popular all over the country. People in Utah care about foot college football. So do people in Seattle. So do people in uh, Eugene, in L.A., in, in uh, Austin, Texas. I mean, well, I know they're going to be in the yeah, SEC soon. SEC, yeah. but Stillwater, like people do care. <laughs> make, nice. make them... Make them still stay relevant. And I think eventually it will happen where the powers that be, whoever ends, that ends up being, will understand it cannot just be one conference dominating everything over and over and over again. Eventually, I promise you, the interest will wane. It will wane. And ESPN should have enough forethought to understand that. Do you know how good it would be for ESPN if USC was awesome? Yeah, man. Man, those, those teams in the mid-2000s, Got t- huge ratings, yeah. So they 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 need Florida State too. Whether you love them or hate them, Florida State gets big ratings. You need these teams to be good, man. And you want teams. You also want the underdog factor. Like oh Alabama, this this plucky uh whoever name a team. This plucky Cincinnati. Oklahoma State team. This plucky Oklahoma State team has a chance to knock off Alabama. Okay, cool. That'll be fun to root for. Now you know eventually Alabama's going to win, but Alabama Georgia, great. So two two teams. It's the Emperor versus Darth Vader. Awesome. And then Luke Skywalker is going to come and gosh, I wish he's was... going to throw the Emperor down the hole. I wish we were doing this show in two thousand and hear Corey talking about ah, screw them all. Sorry, Florida State's winning all the time. Get over it. Get well, better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, How about that? Get know. better. How about that? <laughs> Age, oh, age gives you a different kind of perspective, right? Age, yeah. and who would have thought in two thousand that Florida State would have some of the years they've had over these, yeah. over these last twenty? Yeah, I, I mean, nothing will surprise me how this sport will look like in the next ten years. Nothing would surprise yeah, me. Yeah, you're right. Um, oh, what's funny though, I meant to bring it up when you were talking about Saban. I just got this quote. He said, "We need some kind of natural legislation to control that." Talking about the NIL, there will be an imbalance as to who dominates college football if it's, if it isn't regulated. I know. Oh, there'll be an imbalance, Nick. Well, wouldn't that be awful? Have you ever cared about that? Do you have to sign every five star? Georgia Tech's got a great running back in the market. You got to go get them, right? Sure. You got to go sign all these NFL coaches and make them. You don't care about the imbalance of college football, and you never have. I would argue that Nick Saban has been the worst thing that's ever happened to college football. Oh, man. I mean, not through. I mean, he's doing his job, and he's awesome yeah, at it. Yeah, that's incredible. But it's it's unbelievable what he's done. But it's also, um, you know, it it it's bad for the sport, man. It's like when Gino had those, the, those run at UConn with those women's teams that won every game by thirty points. It's like this isn't good for the growth of the sport. 
what Alabama's doing isn't good for the growth of the sport, except in one pocket of the country. All right, let's get to the That's last it. question. We've still got plenty more to get to. Uh, how do you right, wake sorry. up? It's sorry. from Birds the Knoll. Birds the Knoll is one of our younger uh, subscribers. Shout out, uh, 25 and under demographic. Come strong. I love Alex Atkins. Well, first off, he says, how do you wake up? I love Alex Atkins. This man has been a godsend for this program. Y'all remember two years ago when our offensive line was embarrassing? I do. It might be the highlight of our team next year. I can say the same for the secondary. We stopped making the opponent's receivers look their best every time we line up against them. With Cooper McCall, Azarie, and hopefully Robinson. Yep, he did come back. We might have a secondary who can go out every week and commit acts of thievery. Knowles, too. Don't forget Knowles. Yeah, man. That being said, I have three semi-mini questions. Okay. One, what happened to Hunter Washington? Lots of praise, no word in a year. Yeah, man, he um he was you know usually I think he was usually running scout. Um, he practiced though. Yeah, he, he was, was out, out there. Practice, yeah, he was yeah. out there. You know, sometimes it takes a little time to get acclimated. I know he was the highest rated defensive back. I mean, he's higher, more higher uh, acclaimed, heralded than uh, Amari and Cooper. But life's funny like that. Um, but yeah, I never I never saw him like getting chewed out or looking surly. Shoulder. I mean, he was, he was pretty engaged and out there every day that we saw him at practice. So he's still around. Yeah. Um, We'll see what happens when spring rolls around. We'll see what happens when a uh, tour of duty happens and we're out there. Mm. Right? We'll keep remind us, Burge, and we'll keep an eye out for him. Um, number two, who's going to be the leading receiver in 2022? Oh, Micah Pittman. Uh, I mean, I want, I, I want to say the Illinois kid, man. I really uh, deuce. I like deuce span. Um, but I will say Malik McLean. Come on, man. Oh, come okay. on, Malik. Come think about on, them. Man. You like think about him too. You throw him into the mix. Yeah. Like you got him who's six four. You got another guy that's six six four. Another guy that's six two. Another guy that's six seven. Like all of a sudden you're looking like an NFL. I know that I'm not saying they're going to the NFL, <laughs> but you have an NFL look at wide receiver. All the teams you got to battle against that always have these big huge guys that they just throw fades to. Now you got them. Yeah. Good for you, Florida State. Number three, any potential position changes next year? Man, um, those always seem to kind of come out of nowhere to a certain degree, it feels like. But then you're like, ah, well, that makes sense. I think Travis, I mean, if we had to bet on anybody, I mean, if, every, if everybody's name, if everybody's number on a roulette table corresponded to their jersey number, I'm putting a bunch of chips on. I should know Travis J's number. I just ruined the entire joke. But whatever Travis 18. J's number is, 18, 18, thank you. I'll put all my chips on 18, probably. Uh, Yeah, I mean, now, though, like I would have thought it had been wide receiver, but they've got three already. Uh, I'm, I think there's another one. They're eight, get what about running after. back? Somebody, I saw somebody mention, like, what about running back? Look at I mean, sure. Possibilities, possibilities with him. It may put a little bit more weight on him. Put him at tight end. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, you got you got a dearth there. You need to fill up that position room. What's Chris Thompson going to do uh, if he doesn't have nine tight ends to coach? Um, yeah, man, I, I just it, – it would be baffling if there's not a role on a football field that this kid can play at the college level. It would seem that safety and cornerback aren't his future just from what we've seen the last two years and the See, fact that he doesn't – how about my man – by the way, I'm just noticing this – Completely lost my train of thought. Travis J. That's a good one. I feel like there's another one out there. Maybe Briggs back to D end. Does that yeah, count? I don't. I don't. Well, I guess. I mean, he says position changes. I usually think about like somebody going from offense to defense, or you know, someone kind of like all right, he, he played safety. Now he's a. I don't. Even that that stuff is a little bit. Yeah. Like all right, now he's going to be closer, a little bit closer. I mean, he's pretty much playing linebacker, but now he's actually a linebacker. Now he's going to be coached by Randy Shannon. Um, which I guess Leonard Leonard Warner's coming back. Yeah, there you Look go. How about that? that? Coach on the field, that kid. Yeah. Um, been there for a while. But did you no, see, as, did you watch the FCS championship game? One of the offensive on, line Amazon. from North Dakota. I mean, come on, man, it's football. Um which by the way, like literally, I don't know if you saw my tweet, twelve years to the day where Colt McCoy went down, fifth play in the national title game against Alabama, mm. Montana State's quarterback went down in the fourth play of oh, the game. Geez. How brutal is that, man? Yeah, your, that's mean, rough. Um, but anyhow, I mean, they had an offensive lineman in North Dakota State that had played in 64 college football games. How is that even possible? Like 64. It's incredible. 
that you know Set there's a uh, so something. It, it, we're going to get to basketball in a second. What I was going to say real quick, Jalen Waddle broke in Quan Bolden's all-time uh, receptions record for a rookie um, on Sunday. Uh, huge game for Waddle too to put the record away. He had five catches for 27 yards. <laughs> So just keep getting it done, man. I think he had 101 catches for like 340 yards. <laughs> just ridiculous. Anquan, come on, man. Get Anquan in the hall. Get yeah. Leroy Butler in the hall first. Jalen Ramsey is on his way there. Florida State could have its own wing here maybe in a, in a few years if Dalvin stays healthy too. But what I was going to say about basketball, and I know we're going there in a second, that Miami team that's coming in on Tuesday, they have a kid named Charlie Moore who, by the way, looks 15. This is his fourth Division One school he's played at. Yeah. He started at Cal. No, he, he started some. He started at Cal, went to like Kansas State, and then to oh, then went to Kansas, then went to like Arizona, and now is at Miami. He's twenty four years old. They have two twenty four year olds on their team, and another kid that's twenty three. Anyway, so yeah, I guess that's the the wave of college athletics now. I know there's one guy that uh, there's a guy that I think he was an Ohio State lineman that tweeted that he was coming back for his seventh year. Yeah. And he, he, he quoted Tommy Callahan from Tommy Boy. Like a lot of people go to college for seven years. Could have been you, Emmett. Could have yeah. been you, man. Yeah, that's right. Selfish. That's right. Selfish. Um, so no other David Spade's answer was like, uh, yeah, they're called doctors. <laughs> uh, so no other possessional, uh, potential position changes. Not uh, not often. I mean, there probably will be one. But yeah, offense to defense. There, there, I don't, was there one of those last year? Those are pretty rare to just completely switch what side of the field you play on. But, uh, I mean, maybe. We'll see. I mean, got, the thing about that, I think that will become less and less of a thing. And it was never really all that common anyway. But with the portal being what it is, usually you make a position change. Like an Ermon Lane went to DB because he couldn't play at wide receiver. Well, yeah. if if Ermon Lane was at Florida a five-star receiver was at Florida State now and couldn't get on the field, well, he would just transfer to another school to play. Hmm. He wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, I guess I'll play safety. Um, that that's I think that's gonna that's not gonna happen as much anymore. They'll just go to another school. I wonder if maybe I've said it before, but I don't. It's for some reason everyone just like scoffs at. Like I wonder if he puts on. Can you put fifteen pounds on Travis J and have him play linebacker? I mean, because like you you, you, know, you lost Eubanks, which whatever it was the only guy you recruited. I think linebacker wise. Um, I mean, I know they brought in the Tatum Bethune kid from UCF. Um, but they brought in Greedy Vance, who's going to play defensive back. Like maybe that's somewhere he can go. But any the, the possibilities just seems like if if anybody, uh, I would think it would be Travis J. Also, Bird as the Knoll says for Corey, I never thought I would find anyone in the world who loves using the phrase "you're allowed to" as much yeah. as me. Anyways, oh. um, love the podcast. I totally don't listen to y'all when I'm in the middle of class. Not at all. Oh, don't, good man, don't, awesome. Don't, don't do that, man. Ah, it's fine. It's fine, man. Too much money, man. Focus on it. Focus on it. The clutch shot, the biggest hit. It's time for the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. All right, you heard the man. Uh, I'm going to keep it on the hardwood because I think that's pretty much the only thing that's going on right now. I'm going to go with uh, Sue Semarau's, uh squad. I'm going to go with Sammy Puisis. She is my Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. She made her 100th career three-point bucket uh, on Sunday in a 41-point win over Wake Forest. She's only the 16th Seminole. To achieve this feat, she had nine points, all of them from behind the arc. We could use that on the men's side. Corey, who's your Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week? Not a surprise. I, I thought about going Matthew Cleveland, but I'm going to stick with uh, uh, Caleb Mills. Uh, scored 27, uh, career high um, in the win over Louisville. Big win. Um, and mainly, he got. I know he scored 23 in the first half, but those were a big 23 for a team that had been that really struggled um, the game before to come out just for confidence' sake. To come out and have a game, to have a half like that was really big. You don't see that a lot with Florida State these days. A kid go out and score twenty seven. It was fun to watch. Wish he'd have gotten forty, but whatever. Wins a win. Caleb Mills, good job, buddy. There we go. Caleb Mills, Sammy Puisis are Zaxby's indescribably good players. Oh, staying with the round ball, Corey. Uh, you pick Caleb Mills. Good pick for your Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. Florida State seventy nine seventy win over Louisville. Uh, the previously undefeated in conference play Louisville Cardinals, uh, as you said, big win. Um, they're kind of cruising there for a little bit and yeah. uh, slipped up a bit, uh, but they held on to win the game. Still don't know what the ceiling for this team is. I don't, I don't want to get too down on them, yeah, but it, just, it still seems like 
the sort of seamless integration we were hoping of these transfers and maybe a little bit more lion's share of responsibility for some of the, the upperclassmen, whether it's Raekwon Evans or Anthony Polite, Malik Osborne, like they would, you know, Leonard's got this thing rolling, let's keep it cooking. Might not be a little easier said than done. Um, I just, I don't know if it's, is it defensively they're not as stout as they once were? Is, is it the, they're not as confident offensively and that's preventing the way that they're defending? Um, I don't know if we want to go that direction. I guess they won, so we really shouldn't start in a, in a negative sort of uh, aspect, but uh, what did we learn from the 79-70 win? Yeah, not a whole lot. Um, you know, yeah, it was a, it was a good win. It was a nice win. I, I thought that the defense in the first half wasn't very good. I thought it was better in the second half. They also got uh, the benefit of Louisville missing some wide, wide open threes yeah. when the game was like a four-point game. They, they must have missed five in a row where they had a chance to like either tie the game or cut it to one, and they were wide open and just missed. Um, I You know, look, I think – they they have a chance to if they if they get you know if they beat duke if they have a a couple wins on the road maybe they can sneak into the tournament i just don't think the ceiling is all that high with this team um unless i mean you know I, i'm not trying to kill the kid because he plays really hard but if anthony polite's going to be a 25% three point shooter it, it, this team isn't going very far you cuz you're already starting with Ray, you're already starting in a hole in the backcourt cuz Raquan Evans isn't going to give you anything offensively and he can't shoot so now you've got another guy that's supposed to be one of the best shooters in the conference and has been through half the season has been awful from behind the arc um has been a net negative player Wyatt Wilkes one of your 60 year seniors has been a net negative player no, Ra- Raquan Evans is at best an average point guard and I'm not trying to kill the kids it's just the truth. They they are. They're not. They're not. Uh, you know, Wyatt Wilkes and Raquan Evans are. They have moments, but they're not. They're not special type players. They know that. They, I think they would agree to that. Re- Anthony Polite's had some big moments in his career, and you'd hope would take that next step, like MJ Walker took when his when his uh, role be- became more. It became a bit when he got a bigger role. He took a big step from his sophomore to his junior year, um, or junior to senior year. Polite di- didn't happen for him. It hasn't happened for him yet. So, you know, your veterans aren't playing great. And as long as they keep playing below average, um, they're going to have a tough time beating good teams away from home or beating good teams, period. That said, Matthew Cleveland is ridiculous. Um, You know, I I hope... When you watch a game like Saturday night, and it was a good win. Louisville was, like you said, with 4-0. They'd they'd lost some bad games, uh, non-conference, and they'd won some very close games in the conference, but they were 4-0. And uh, you came in and, and really played well offensively to start the game. Then you went through one of your droughts that you go through. You throw the ball into Naheem McLeod for some reason. He should only shoot when he's dunking it. Other than that, don't bother. I don't even know why you throw it into him. It doesn't. They want you to throw the ball into Naheem McLeod. They let him post up and get good position because they want him to have the ball because he's not real versed in any of that yet. He's not a great passer out. He's not, he's not a good shooter. Um, but anyway, he will be. I think he's got a chance to be really good. But either way, um, you, you, have, you have a guy like Matthew Cleveland who is a freak. Like, he is a very talented dude. And you start thinking, so is Cam Fletcher and Kayla Mills, as you saw. Well, Kayla Mills is a sophomore. Fletcher's, a, I think, a freshman. He only played four or five games last year for Kentucky. Cleveland's a freshman. Worley has his moments. You're like, man, they got a chance next year. You know what I mean? Like, next year... They could be something. These guys could use this year. You know, you don't like to say rebuilding at Florida State, but clearly this isn't a Final Four caliber team. It wouldn't appear unless something drastically changes. But, man, they've got a chance next year to be something pretty special if all these guys take big steps and improve like we think they can. At the same time, who knows if they're coming back? Like, you know what I mean? You just, yeah. you can't, you can't take for, not in a million years if you'd asked me last January, you think boss is going to be going pro? What? No. What? So you never know, man. You never know what guys get told if they transfer, if they go, if they try to go pro and play overseas, whatever they just take a shot in the G League. But um, if those guys come back, uh, they have a chance to be pretty darn good next year. And this could, the way I'm viewing this year is it's like a stepping stone. It's a rebuilding year. That seems obvious. I don't foresee a 25 win season coming on here. I think they would be lucky to sneak into the tournament as like an eight or nine or a 10 seed. And that would take them having to play better 
than they've currently played. But their ceiling is higher than we've seen because Anthony Polite, I just can't imagine, is going to continue to shoot like this. He will f- go through a stretch where he finds his confidence and all of a sudden is four of six from three. Um, Wyatt Wilkes won't continue to shoot like this, um, I don't think. So, you know, they got a chance, but it seems like their, uh, you know, the, their best their their best lineup, it seems, is with Osborne at the five, but then they don't rebound. Um so they get beat down low. They get beat for put putbacks and and points in the paint a lot. So they they got some issues that they haven't really had here um, in a while. But they're 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 due one of these seasons, right? Yeah. That said, it was a good it was a good win, and maybe it kickstarts something. Okay. This game on Tuesday is an enormous game yeah. because Miami's probably going to be ranked. Uh, they ju- they're just coming off a win at Duke. They are a very experienced team who desperately wants to beat Florida State because I feel like it's been since. I don't know. I don't know when the last time they beat Florida State in basketball. I feel like it's been a long time, like five or six in a row. By the way, that was the fifth time in a row Florida State's beaten Louisville. Chris yeah. Mack, man, yeah. get your stuff together. But man, um, if they can – if let, I guess ask me again after the Miami game. I want to see what they look like there because that team, that Miami team is for real. They 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 have a bunch of veterans um, that, that they're going to be hard to beat. And so we'll we'll see we'll see what happens there, but that would be a huge win for them. If they don't beat Miami, I have a hard time seeing how because the ACC is so down. Where other wins are on the schedule that would be good enough to offset what they did in non-conference, yeah. they've got to start stacking on. So they don't have a chance for a ton of quality wins. They've got two against Miami coming up in the next two or three weeks that they need to win at least one of them and maybe both. So they they still got a chance. They just got to show some improvement. Miami, but Mills, man, yeah. I was going to say, did you watch the game? Yeah, I watched the second half. I watched the second half. And oh, I so you missed it. Dude, when, you, when, when Caleb Mills gets going, good grief. That's and what that I was one, tuning in for. I'm like, oh, I keep seeing all these tweets about him. Let me see what he's uh, all about. And then he's, Yeah, he yeah. picked up his third foul and then went and sat for seven minutes while, the, while they couldn't score. But, man, when he, when he gets going, and he hasn't really had moments like that this year, where he's like, he did that at Houston one time where he scored 16 or 18 straight points. For Houston as a freshman, he scored 30 in a game or 27 in a game. He scored over 27 or eight times. He's had moments like that at Houston. He hadn't really had a chance yet at Florida State. And I think maybe it looked like he had even been told, like, dude, you just got to go. You got to go score for us, man. You Quit being so passive. They're, even if you're not open, go shoot. Because that's a good shot for you, which means it's a good shot for us. If, if our other guards are going to continue to play like this, we need you to go get buckets. And man, when he he had one bank in, um, he he made a he made, he missed like his first three shots, then made a layup, then really missed badly on another jumper, I think, and then he made a he made a jumper on a uh, he banked in a shot from like four feet behind the free throw line, banked it, and he didn't mean to. And after that, he's like, oh, I guess I guess tonight's my night. And he had like seven in a row, and they were guarded, and they were I mean they were just that was really impressive to see. So it was good to see him. Good to see what he has, what he has, um, because we hadn't really seen that yet, and you're gonna have to see a lot more of it if this team's gonna do anything of note. Well done. I had a basketball take, but don't even need to uncork it. On go for it. Go. No, go. Ahead. I want to hear. It. We're over in an hour. I want to hear. It. No, I'll it's say fine. It. It's no, fine. We need to, no, it's fine. It's, we're over an hour. Seriously, it's oh, fine. Sorry, no, I talked. No, a lot. no, there's nothing. That's, it's good. We, hey man, this is the time where when you do a podcast three days a week, uh, where it's like, all right, we need to save some topics for later on, so we have something to talk about. Or we just keep, you know, recycle not recycling, we just, you know, we just partition off Renegade Express into multiple shows, but people don't want that, I don't think. Voice, uh, sound off, let us know what you think in the uh, Tribal Council thread where we post this show every single day. Anyhow, we're going to speak to the quarterback's coach for your Florida State Seminoles, Tony Tokars. Later on this morning, we'll have a uh, blow-by-blow, quote-by-quote video, and uh, probably even a story. Corey's probably going to have to do that one. Mm. Uh, it'll be on the website. And then Jeff Cameron's on from 1 to 3. He'll let you know what he thinks about it, too. So um, it's the off season, quote unquote, but not really. We're here working. We're a website. We're open all the time. He's Corey. I'm Aslan. Thank you for listening to Wake Up War Chant. Fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Come explore our world of coffee. DeLuna Coffee features over two dozen different blends. DeLuna's unique roasts can be delivered ground finely for drip coffee makers, coarse for the craft crowd, untouched as a whole bean, or even in convenient K-cups. 
founded in 2014 by the Lemmix family, Ed and Brett are FSU alums and boosters who are extending a special offer to all listeners. Use the promo code WARCHANT15 for a 15% discount. Visit DeLunaCoffee.com and check out their Facebook and Instagram. 